It's officially day three of our stay in Easter Island. The wind shifted, it's coming from the north now, which means that we're relatively unprotected in this anchorage. And all the mana holds, the first thing in the morning, they pulled up anchor and um, switched anchorage. We barely feel anything of the swell, even though it is, um, it is pretty big. We don't have any way of getting in. With a swell like this, we don't want to risk getting the dinghy in the harbor here in Hangaroa. At least not for the first time, since we're still newbies here. So, um, another boat, she's chartering here. And she is taking a boat to the other anchorage and offered us to drop us off there at the dock. Which is our best chance of getting in right now. So that's why we are going to switch anchorage with everybody else. Look. There's three boats left now. This is Hangaroa, the, the main anchorage. And this is Vinapu, where everybody's moving to right now. So, most in this season, the wind is mostly easterly, so most of the time you're protected. But even in the main season, or in the middle of the season, um, you're required to move to other anchorages from time to time. Right now, the wind is almost coming straight from the north. So, this is the safest place right here. That's where everybody's going. Anchor is up. We're sailing to Vinapu. I was on the wheel and I, we had the motors on and um, I, I helped James with the motors obviously, but uh, with the swell and the length of the chain plus road that we have out there, it took us like 20 minutes to pull up. <laughs> James is pretty exhausted now. I think I'm gonna buy him a windlass to his, for his birthday. He's definitely gonna um, get really buff this way. Really buff quickly. That was heavy. That anchor is uh, ridiculously heavy. We were anchored in 75 feet of water, so that means we had the anchor plus 75 feet of that chain. I could barely do it at the end. That is something I can't do twice a day, that's for sure. That's what the chain does to you. It's day three <laughs> in Easter Island. We haven't even been on the damn island yet. We have not left the boat yet. It's kind of frustrating to be I, honest. I heard that that's pretty common. From what I've heard from people is it's pretty common and people actually get fed up with it because at night it's really rolly and on, on a monohull boat some of these guys are, are can't sleep at night, you know? And if you get that for like a week plus you can't get in, you're just done with the place. So the autopilot issue, to get the parts I need, the ring on the inside and the belt, it's going to be $175. Uh, to get a used whole wheel with the motor, and then we'd have a spare motor, is $2,250. So that's kind of a no-brainer. And then uh, to get a whole new wheel pilot, the, the ring with the motor, brand new, is $550. Uh, so that may be an option. Or to get a, a completely new autopilot system is 3200. That's what I would like. And I think eventually we're gonna need to get a, a t uh, it's called a linear drive. It's a motor and it just pushes and pulls on a worm gear so it's way stronger. Um, that little wheel pilot always, always messes up with us because our boat's fast. And it's a lot of force on the rudders. Even though it's very easy to drive this boat, when it's going fast, it's, it, it can put a lot of force on it. So, ultimately, whatever we spend on fixing this one is going to be a waste of money, I think. I don't know yet. I think that we should try to get a new autopilot. The best thing to do would be buy an autopilot, have it shipped here, I'll install it, and then we'll, we never have to worry about it again for all the time that we're traveling. The sun like 
hitting the volcanic rock with the green grass growing over it and these weird rocks that even almost look like moas themselves in the middle of nowhere. This is like one of the most remote places on earth. Damn, I can't wait to explore this island and learn about how people live here and how they have lived here and what the fuck is up with these statues. I was really pissed yesterday because um, we didn't have any food and we couldn't go in and I was looking forward to it for like three weeks to finally see this island but now that's all blown away because I'm just so stoked. I can't remember ever being so excited about a place. We're pretty protected already. We're on the southern side now. is pretty tricky um, especially because because it's so deep here and our depth sounder is only working sometimes right now it's not working at all um, and we don't notice anchorage we don't really have charts either so I have to get in and look whether it's sand or coral or rocks in this case it was sand so James dropped the hook and now we have to see are we gonna get close to the green boat or are we gonna if, if we get tight, if the rope gets tight, are we gonna drag into the red boat? Or maybe the fucking white boat over there? It's hard. What's the swing radius? Are we gonna be too close to land or, yeah. The windshields are gonna hit the rocks. Yeah, all that. So many things to consider. You don't know how the holding is. Even though it should be, it should be sand here, so it should be pretty good. But you, you can't be sure if you don't know the anchorage. Now it looks as if we're gonna get close to the red boat, but the road is not completely out yet and the wind hasn't, you know, we're not tight yet, so we don't know what direction we're actually gonna point in. And if we have to pull it all back up, it's like 400 feet almost out there. So it's gonna be a whole new hustle. It's hard, it really is, to get that right. And um, I would dare to say that even long time cruisers have trouble always getting it perfect on the, on the first um, anchor drop. It's, a, it's an art. Yeah. It's an art, for sure. Go in and check the There's so the many track. unknowns that you kind of have to juggle. Because of the coral heads that we have here on Easter Island, which are beautiful, you, but um, the problem with those coral heads is that even if you anchor in sand, with that much road out on a day where it's not that windy, the road gets slack and it's, it, it can wrap around coral heads. That's why we put a fender on the, on the road, a few meters behind the road where it meets the chain, where the road meets the chain. And um, so, that, so that the fender lifts the road when it's not tight, so that it's not gonna um, wrap around any coral or rocks. So that's the theory. We had already chafing on our road the first night. The first time we used the road, um, that's okay. We know better now. It's not in bad shape. It's not in bad shape at all. It's just a little, you can see like the, the outer fibers kind of kind of came out, so it looks a little fluffy there, but um, it's not reduced in strength or anything like that, so don't worry. James is gonna jump in now and give you the verdict after that. close to the red boat but we're not too close to cause discomfort for any of the involved parties I would say. One possibility is always uh, pulling a little anchor road up but since we want to leave the boat today and we don't know how windy it's gonna be later that is not really an option. You want to keep at least one to five scope out so five times the depth is what you what you should have out in chain and road combined uh, 
on the minimum. One to seven is ideal. And then again, that's one of these factors that you don't know about. How much do the other boats have out? One to five, one to seven, or maybe they, they want to be on the real safe side and they put one to ten out. You know, you just don't know. Um, so every time the wind shifts, you kind of have to have an eye out. Are we getting too close to this or that? Oh, it's getting really complicated when mooring bolts are involved because those boats have a really small swing radius. They are really far from you and when the wind comes from the north for example then the wind shifts to the south and all of a sudden you, you drag completely into them because you have a much um, wider swing in range than, than they have on the mooring mall. So <laughs> it really is an art. One of the hardest things about cruising in general I would say because most of the time you're somewhere anchored and a lot of times there's other boats there. Yeah. It is hard. So let's hope that James comes back with a good verdict so that we can um, core Martha and um, go on the island. Okay, everything looks good. We're gonna set the anchor now. I just dove it and it's already pretty set. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't move back any. We're a little close to this boat, but we can pick up a little bit of the slack. We got 300 feet out. Okay, a little more. Three. That's as close as we're going to get to him. That's it. We're still 50 meters from him, so. Woohoo! We did it! Anchored in a new anchorage. We're in a perfect spot here. I think we have swing room everywhere except for that boat, maybe if the wind comes from the south. But it's not forecasted to, so. We're good. We're sweet. This is a sweet spot. In, in retrospect, I think what we should do is, is move that fender back like 10 meters on that chain. Because right now, oh, so it lifts it that much. It does yeah. lift it, yeah, but I don't think it. I don't think it, it's going to really help as much as it could if it was back a little more. It would lift more of the chain of the road up. Yeah. Okay. Marta just came over, the girl that we've been talking about, and she's she's awesome. Hopefully we can take her out tonight for a night out and she already gave us um, the most basic insider insights. This is, a, this is a great side of the island, it's her favorite and um, that she would go for walks here along the coast and so hopefully we're gonna do that tomorrow. She's gonna pick us up in five minutes or so, um, take us in and we're gonna hitchhike to the town, Hangaroa. On the other side, the anchorage that we just came from, that's, that's where that is. We're gonna buy some fruit and we're gonna finally set foot on land and not just some land, but Easter fucking island and <laughs> we're really excited. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, life is good right now. Unfortunately, we don't have any shoes. My boyfriend looks like a bum with his shorts as dirty as they, his shorts get. And, uh, but that, that's okay. We're gonna figure out the autopilot situation. Seems like we can get something for like 300 bucks. And we have to have money. Thank you, patrons. Life is great, yeah. Yeah, we anchored well, too. Our neighbors from the other anchorage are just moving in there behind us. So they just sailed over here. They can point so much higher than we can. It's really unfair. It just came in like that in the anchorage. Yeah. We just had to tag last minute. Well, we didn't have a main up. Yeah, still, we couldn't reach that high if we tried. 